Starting tomorrow, the EU is going to begin charging import duties of 25% on a range of U.S. products, things like bourbon, which I'd say the Europeans could probably do without, and uh, Harley-Davidson motorcycles. So where do we go from here? Joining me right now, James Freeman from the Wall Street Journal, along with Washington Examiner's editorial director, Hugo Gordon. Good to see both you guys. James, starting with you, I do want to point out that we're getting news that a lot of the German automakers, perhaps because they're concerned about this hit to earnings, mm -hmm. they are advocating for a 0% tariff both ways. So this might be one where business is able to help influence policy a little bit because it's meaningful for their bottom line. I mean, I don't think it's all bad here if we can actually get to a place where ideally we are in a 0% tariff world. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think that was the best news we've seen since this, I don't know if we call it a trade war, this trade dispute began. Uh, like, uh, I guess most investors telling us with their stock decisions, I don't see a whole lot of upside. But this is encouraging. Uh, when President Trump said, let's have a no tariff zone at the G7 meeting, I think a lot of people laughed at that. There was obviously no immediate yeah. endorsement. But now you look at and kudos to our uh, ambassador to Germany, Richard Grinnell, for getting the Germans on board with a sure. no tariff policy. Now, obviously, they got to sell the rest of the EU unless they want to try and somehow cut their own deal. But mm -hmm. it's encouraging. I, I agree with you. Um, so maybe we see some more of this, Hugo. I mean, nobody's ever asked for this before, right? Like somehow every administration's kind of gone on, along with this whole idea. All right. Yeah. You know, the Europeans are going to charge us. The, the Chinese are going to charge us. Maybe it makes our stuff less competitive, but they haven't cared. Nobody said boo until now. Yeah, I think that, that, that we got to a, a really interesting point here where, as you say, there's some indication that German automakers want to uh, capitulate, basically, to uh, President Trump and reduce tariffs for American autos to zero. Now, if the threat of tariffs that, and, and President Trump's really pretty aggressive and belligerent attitude towards the raising of tariffs and saying it's easy to win a trade war, if that kind of aggression produces quick capitulation, then obviously he's going to be able to declare victory and say, see, I told you I could get a better deal than my predecessors. The problem is, of course, he's playing with fire, that basically tariffs are a tax on Americans. Tax, you know, every car that we buy, every auto we buy, mm -hmm. is going to, the price is going to go up because the cost of steel is going to go up. There are also... I mean, well, a there's a lot of there's a, a, there's a lot of also it destroys jobs. Uh, I mean, tariffs generally generally do. There are 17 million people in the United States okay. who l work in steel consuming industries, and only 150 mm -hmm. who work in st steel making. So, so, there's a, so there's can a big I disparity. can I take this this what you're saying though forward a little bit? I mean, yeah. assuming that as you say, tariffs are going to hurt the steel industry. Well, what would happen if say you know Harley Davidson? Uh, is able to sell motorcycles somewhere like India where they're selling them right now, but they're slapping a 100 percent tariff on those Harley David motorcycles. If we say, hey, India, that's not going to fly. India says, OK, we go to zero tariffs. Then you sell more motorcycles. Thus, the steel industry does better. Yeah, no, that, that's absolutely true. If the threat of tariffs work and it produces capitulation on all of those uh, countries around the world that are unfairly uh, slapping tariffs and taxing uh, uh, American products, then sure, that's that's a huge win. But the, you know, the Europeans are just about to slap re retaliatory tariffs okay, on but, but, American okay. goods. So, if I, and you know what, James, I like that you called it a dispute because it is a dispute. It's not a full-on war yet, mm -hmm. and let's not get ahead of ourselves. But in this dispute, this trade dispute, um, who has the upper hand? Uh, I think. We all lose if the result is more tariffs. But you could, I, and here's, I think the president would say he does, because at 12% of our economy, the U.S. is much more or much less sensitive to trade than some other places. So, so I'd agree with him on that. I think we are the world's biggest customer. And <laughs> as the world's biggest customer, we ought to have a little bit of clout, right? Yeah. Credit card company would give you a better rate, right, if you're a big customer. It seems to me that... The Europeans should say, gosh, you buy so much stuff from us, we're going to play fair. Uh, they might. And I think the news from Germany is positive in that direction. But uh, obviously, in a lot of countries in Europe, much less enthusiasm for going to the no tariff zone, much, uh, much more eagerness to protect their own industries. Yeah. Also, when you look at China, 
you know, they, that regime probably has more time than President Trump to right. play this well, game. Well, no, out. I know, because they, they're, they're playing for 100 years, and we're playing for, you know, four over here, eight, if you're lucky. He's got to get president. a Republican House reelected yeah. and get some impeached. <laughs> yeah, I um, no, I hear you. I hear you. But, uh, again, we are the biggest customer, so let's use a little of our leverage, right? Hugo, James, good to see you guys. I'm going to have more intel. Thank after. you. Thank